Hello everyone, it's Forza Dave here and welcome to another OBS settings tutorial. This one's going to be an updated one on the last one I made, which was in about January, I think, this year. Uh, so this is going to contain uh, all the new settings and stuff that I'm running in this version. This is 18.0.1. I think the last tutorial was 17.0, so we're a whole version ahead now and there's been a couple of things added. A couple of different opinions I have on the software and the best way to run it. And I'll run you guys all through it as quickly and efficiently as I can. So first of all, starting off, when you actually download the software from the website I'll link it in the description um, you want to open up the software by if you search for it in your Windows bar if you search OBS you actually get two versions here you'll get a 32-bit and a 64-bit version now I'm assuming most of you guys are running on 64-bit systems if you're running like 8 gigs of RAM or something of like that or higher then you're, then you're definitely running on a 64-bit system make sure you're running this uh, software um, I still see some people running the 32-bit and having issues um, it won't utilize your RAM properly it will run really slow so make sure you use the 64-bit version and when you open it up you'll then be greeted with this screen so the first thing we want to do is we want to go into our settings so we click the settings button here and you're greeted with a bunch of different tabs and for the general tab you can essentially leave this as as it is this is just you can read through these and see what they do um, nothing here is crucial to your recording um, you've got things like your theme uh, things like whether you want to uh, uh, show your comp show a confirmation box when you start or stop streams and stuff like that. So just have a look through here, look at what you want and then set it up. In stream, we are not going to have to do anything here because we're not streaming, we're only recording. But if you want to find out how to stream, then look for other tutorials online because it's not going to be covered today. Output is the first big important tab that we come to in the settings. So what we want to do is set the output mode from simple to advanced. Make sure it's on advanced. This allows us to take complete control of the software and make it do what we want it to do. Next, go to recording. Set your type to standard and then set your recording path to wherever you want to. Ideally, if you have a separate hard drive, put it on there because you'll get more efficient recording going to there. And also it means you're less likely to run out of space. But if not, just find a folder and set it in there. Recording format, set this to MP4. Uh, this is compatible with all the sorts of editing software, whether it's Sony Vegas or Adobe Premiere like I use. It just slots it in nicely and has all your audio tracks in place for you to use. Next, you're going to set how many audio tracks you want. So for a lot of people, you might only have one or two. So whether that might just be uh, your game audio and your microphone. I have a way that I run my game audio, my microphone, and then my kind of Skype or TeamSpeak or Discord audio through a third track. So I run three tracks. Um, you could just turn all these on and maybe then use them for other things. But usually you'll be using two or three of these. Uh, if you want a tutorial on how to get the um, the third track for your Discord audio, you can search on Google to search for voice meter um, split audio tutorial and uh, you should find out something like that. Uh, next is the encoder. So the encoder here, and I, have, I had a couple of people in my last video saying uh, some interesting things about this and getting a bit confused. So the encoder that I use is the NVENC H.264 encoder. Now this is the NVIDIA's encoder that comes kind of packaged with your NVIDIA GPU. I have a GTX 1070 graphics card, a really nice graphics card that can run the NVENC H.264 encoder really, really nicely. Um, if you look at this box and you don't have this NVENC H.264 encoder, one of two things is, is happening. Actually, one of three things. Number one, you don't have a good graphics card. You've only got an integrated graphics card. Unfortunately, then, you're going to have to go with X264. You might possibly have a quick sync here if you have it enabled on your CPU. I'm not going to explain that today. But you're going to have to go with X264 and look for a different tutorial because I'm not going to be explaining it today. Uh, number two, you do have a really nice graphics card, but it's an AMD graphics card, like a, a Radeon series graphics card. Uh, in that case, you probably should have another thing here, which I can't remember what it's called, but it's the AMD's version of NVENC. And it basically does the same thing, so you can select that and you should be able to follow along with the recordings in a similar way. Um, and the third thing is maybe you do have a really nice NVIDIA graphics card, but you still don't have this here. Make sure you've got the latest drivers installed. You can get the latest drivers by going to... Um, NVIDIA GeForce Experience, you can find it, you can search for it, open it up, and then you can download your driver through that, and it's really, really simple. Next thing is rescale output. So we're going to be leaving it at 1080p, so just do not change this. 
Um, and then we get into our control settings for what's going to give us the quality. So we have a couple of different options here that you can go with. Uh, at the moment, I'm going with the rate control of CBR, which is a constant bitrate. This means that no matter what time you're at in the video, the bitrate is set here is the bitrate that's going to be used. The bitrate is essentially how many bits are able to be put into a, a, like a frame, essentially, I think. Um, so it's how much quality can we give to the footage like over time. So a 50,000 bit rate is really decent for NVENC. Um, you could even up this to maybe 60,000, um, but 50,000 is what Shadowplay runs at. If you guys know what Shadowplay is, it's NVIDIA's encoder um, in, the G in the GeForce Experience software, and that gets really good quality. So I base it off that and just go for that, and it, it works out well for me. If you really want to push the quality, but um, it might give you larger file sizes, you can instead go with a constant quality preset and then set this to 18. So what this does is instead of saying, okay, I'm going to keep the bitrate the same throughout the whole video, it says I'm going to try and keep the quality the same throughout the whole video. This means if there's any really, really crazy sections in the video, maybe you're playing like FPS where you're moving really fast, there's explosions going on everywhere, and the system says, okay, we need more bitrate than 50,000, it will up it to keep the quality at what we call 18. Just put it at 18, it works out really well, um, or if you want to save some file space and maybe save some time on your computer, put it at 50,000 on a CBR bitrate. Keyframe interval, just set it at zero, auto, fine. Preset, um, this is kind of down to you. I keep it at default. Uh, these settings can boost your quality in certain ways. Some people like to go Blu-ray, some people like to go high quality, but right now I've just been keeping it at default just to make sure everything works fine. You can look at what these do by searching them up on the NVIDIA encoder uh, through Google to see which one might work best for you. Profile you want to set to high. Uh, this is mainly because the profile is to do with whether you're recording high definition or standard definition for me um, for standard definition you'd be going main but for high definition we want to be going high here level just keep it at auto enable two pass encoding because it will it hasn't had any effect on me it, like enabling or disabling i don't really see much difference so i just keep it enabled because it should give you better quality gpu just keep it set at zero and then b frames leave it set at two Next, we go to audio and just jack all these up to 320 bitrate. I know I don't use track 4, 5, and 6, but just set them there anyway in case I ever enable them. Okay. Next is audio. So in the audio settings, this is how we set up all our microphone and all that kind of stuff. So first thing is very, very key, sample rate. So the sample rate is um, a frequency at which the at which your sound is recorded at. You want to make sure this matches up with your sound settings. Now, so set this at 48 kilohertz. And then go to your sound settings down here, uh, say recording devices. I can go to my microphone here, my producer USB microphone. From right click it, go to properties, go to advanced, and make sure here it's set at 48,000 hertz. So this is the highest this will go, two channel 16 bit 48,000 hertz. If this, for example, was set at 44.1K, um, then this would have issues in the software. Um, it would lead to there having to be a conversion of sample rate, which can actually put a, a massive load on your CPU and also cause some syncing issues. So make sure the sample rate matches up with uh, whatever devices you're using here. Go into your sound settings and make sure they match up. Set the channels to stereo. And then down here, you can have up to two desktop devices and, two mic and three mic devices. So my mic device, I set as my producer USB microphone. And then for my desktop audio, this is my split audio, which you can go search for. It's this voice meter, which I which I mentioned before. So um, otherwise here, you could just select your speakers and then you'd have your two tracks, which will split when you actually go into your editing software later on. Next is video. So as I said, I'm doing 1080p. So I keep this at both of these at 1080p. I record at 60 FPS, so I keep my FPS at 60. You could drop this to 30 if you want to, if you need to, if your CPU isn't running too well. Um, sorry, your computer, not your CPU. Um, and the downscale filter, just set this at Lankazos uh, 32 samples. We're not actually downscaling, but um, it's another kind of safety net in case for some reason I ever do reduce it down to 720p. I don't have to remember to change this. Hotkeys, you can set your hotkeys if you want to set them. I don't actually use hotkeys. Maybe I should, um, but it allows you to start and stop streaming without having to click it in the software, which is pretty helpful. And then in advance, just a couple of things which I've changed here from my last time. Uh, uh, I'm not sure exactly sure what I was going with last time, but general here in the process priority, I put this to high. So what's going to happen is if you run uh, a game that is quite uh, intensive on your computer and then you run OBS, if they have to compete for 
uh, for power, then what will happen is a lot of the time the game will take the power that it needs and leave OBS with not enough power to properly run and this will start to make you drop frames in your recording. I had this issue when I was playing Resident Evil um, and it means that your recording comes out all janky and looking like absolute crap. So what you want to do is make sure this is set to high only if you're having these issues because I was having these issues in the game and what this will mean is that if you ever get to the scenario where two th where, your, where your OBS needs to compete with your game OBS will take the, the upper ground take what it needs to run and then your game will suffer a little bit it doesn't happen too often but in my opinion I'd rather drop frames in game than end up with a recording that is just horrid and janky that's how I feel but otherwise just keep this at normal and it'll work fine for you Video renderer, keep this a direct 3D, do not use OpenGL, please. Um, adapter, this is just blank for me, but I think if you have multiple GPUs, then that's what's going to come up here. Um, color format, leave it at NV12, these will just chug your PC to shit if you try and run them. Um, at least that's what I found. Um, YUV color space, increase this to 709 to get the colors that you want, um, but keep the color range at partial. If you put it at full, it'll make your video really dark, I found, and it's not very nice. Um, and then that's all we have for settings, so we'll just uh, keep this all as is. The next thing I will show you is how to set up our audio devices and also how to add our gameplay, because in the last tutorial I had loads of people commenting saying, my game won't show up, what the hell's going on? Um, so we'll start off with that. What you want to do is you want to come to scenes, and you can go add, you can make a new scene, you can call this games, or something like that. And what we'll do is we'll create a new scene, and you can switch between all your different scenes here later on for whatever you're recording. So I've got one set up for PC game, I've got one set up for my console, and I've got one set up for when I want to record my desktop. Next thing you want to do is add a source. So you come here, right click, click add, and you want to go to um, game capture. Okay, you could give this a name if you want, I typically don't. And then in here, you've got a couple of different things that you can actually set up. Um, you can go in here. You can either keep this, capture any full screen application, see if that works when your game opens up. Maybe it'll just capture it and be like, hey, that, that's what that's what I wanted. Um, if not, try do try do uh, capture specific window and then click here and then you can select whatever window you want. Like your game will appear up here if it's, if it's open. Um, another thing which someone mentioned in my comments before that it was if you were playing a game and for some reason it really wouldn't allow you to hook into the game turn off this use anti-cheat compatibility hook and sometimes it will work you can also allow third party overlays such as like your steam overlay to be captured i don't typically have this because i don't like um like when messages come up i don't want them to appear up on my on my video um, so I leave this off, but if you did want this, you could turn that on as well. You've got a bunch of other things you can add here. Things like you can add a, a display capture, which will just capture your whole monitor. In fact, I will quickly show you that. So if you add a display capture, um, here we go, it's capturing this. We've got a kind of tunnel effect here. Um, you can literally grab the source in here and then you can rescale it and put it wherever you want. So you could have it up here, you could add a camera down here. It's really, really flexible. And then you can just delete it by pressing delete. You've got things like webcams, um, which you'll go to video capture device and select your webcam. You've got um, uh, capturing specific windows. You can add text. You can do all sorts of stuff. It's great. The last thing is the audio. So if we come to the mixer, you'll have all three. Like I've got all three of my audio tracks. And the key thing here for me is that I want them each on a different track. So I want my desktop audio on track one. So I remove all the other tracks. I want my mic just on track two. So I remove all the other tracks. And I want my desktop audio two, which is my Skype, TeamSpeak, whatever, Discord audio on track three. So I remove all the others and leave it at that. And I think, guys, that is everything that I have to cover today. So this covers OBS 18.0. 0.1 64-bit uh, if you want to get this software you can find the link in the description it's definitely my go-to bit of software to do any recording because it's just really flexible it's it works it allows you to do so many different things if I want to stream with it I can do that as well it's free I think that's the biggest one don't be going with other stuff like DX Tori and Fraps and stuff like that it's just really not necessary right now this software is amazing go get it thanks very much for watching guys hope you have enjoyed and found this informative um if you're new to the channel check out my channel for some awesome videos uh, i have a, like videos coming out all the time which are i put a lot of effort into um so hopefully you enjoy them and you could maybe leave a like leave a comment subscribe i'll see you guys in my next video Bye bye